Reagan and I go to Pioneer and my question is, what kind of weather starts when, when a cold surface hits a hot surface? Excellent question and very well said. And this is the age old question, right? What happens when cold air hits warm air, right? Well, this is it right here. It's a front. It's a cold front. I've talked a lot about it. So I'm going to show you some different types of weather that we'll get when the cold hits warm or the warm hits cold. So when cold air comes in, because cold air is more dense than warm air, it is heavier than warm air, and it comes in hugging the ground, and so it tends to bow like this when cold air is advancing. This is what happens. So on a weather map, we would see that blue line here with these uh, blue pointy barbs here. Well, when it runs into that warm air and comes in contact with the warm air, the warm air then being lighter is forced to rise, and we know by uh, the water cycle, the cooling and condensing of the air, we get the clouds forming, you get some big thunderstorms on the leading edge of a cold front. So when we get a cold front jamming into that warm air, it'll tend to cause thunderstorms or at least showers to form. We may get a cold front overnight tonight that will bring some showers in. No thunderstorms likely, but we'll get showers out of it. That's what happens when the cold air is advancing. What happens though when warm air is blowing in and the cold air is retreating? Again, we have to remember that the cold air is heavier, so here's the cold air now. This is the warm air advancing and that warm air is going to ride over the top of the cold air a little more quickly as the cold air sluggishly moves to the east here and so this long ramping effect of rising air causes high thin cirrus clouds to form at 26,000 feet and you see these starting to lower and thicken it means you've got a warm front coming in the precipitation will then follow it could be snow then turns to rain and then the warm front comes through and warmer drier air comes in behind you great question again from Pioneer Elementary I have another weather question coming up in my special weather segment in just a little bit. In the meantime, record high temperature, 74 degrees today, right on the mark of the three degree guarantee. Tomorrow's is down to 59. Big change coming in. So we'll see after that cold front comes through and brings the cooler weather in just where our high temperature settles in tomorrow. 54 to 60 right now, though it's 50 in Ontario. It was much cooler today. A thick cloud cover sprinkles to the west. Our precipitation is not too far behind. Our cold front right in here. So that's that cold air coming in. And as it runs into the mild weather we had over today, the rising air causing the clouds to form. And here's our showers here. This will come through overnight tonight. And then behind the cold front, there's still uh, some scattered showers showers here. We have a chance for showers in the Treasure Valley, but the best chance for rain in the valley is going to come early, early in the morning, and it shows up in my future cast here. This is 5 o'clock in the morning. There's that cold front coming through. Might get some gusty winds with it as it comes through, but not a really good time for wind and not a big temperature contrast, but rain and snow showers down to 6,000 feet with snow flying above that. So we'll get that precipitation in the morning. Later in the day, a slight chance for showers the middle part of the day. I still think we'll have a chance for showers coming in, especially Boise northward into the mountains. And then eventually we'll start to dry out later in the day on Thursday. Look at the sunshine returning for the day on Friday. This is Friday afternoon. A few high clouds here. That's about it. And moving into Saturday, dry weather as well, but more high clouds could mix in. It could become mostly cloudy as you head towards Saturday night, which means if you head into the football game, that could be good news because remember, the clouds like tonight act as a blanket, not allowing that temperature to drop very quickly. So, jet stream dips on overhead during the day tomorrow. That's going to bring the, uh, again, some gusty winds possible with the front as it goes through in the morning. The scattered rain and snow showers above 6,000 feet. And we're going to look all the way ahead to Election Day. What's the weather going to be like across the nation? Another storm system is going to start to roar up the East Coast. Obviously not the size of Sandy. This will be a typical nor'easter, but it's going to go right up the coast, giving rain to some of the heavily populated regions. So that could affect some voter turnout here right along the East Coast. Everybody else should be generally dry. We will be very pleasant in the Northwest. West. Here's my underside forecast for the Treasure Valley. Some rain showers at 5 in the morning, then a break, and then maybe some more midday showers as well. Only in the upper 50s and near 60 tomorrow with those scattered showers. So cool the weather. I don't think we'll have a bunch of a breeze during the day. And then in the mountains, scattered showers likely. You get above 6,000 feet, top of Brundage Mountain, for instance, snow will start to fly again as cool the weather moves in at least for one day. And temperatures are going to warm right back up. East Central Mountain, Stanley, Sun Valley, upper 40s to low 50s, mostly cloudy, some rain and snow showers. Again, the snow showers in those highest of elevations. And the Magic Valley, too far south again for the precipitation, just mid-50s and mostly cloudy. My on-your-side extended forecast, look at this. The temperatures drop, and we get a little fog on Friday, but the sun comes out right through the weekend. Sunshine, election day, 67 degrees. And don't forget that right there. That's the clocks being turned back on Saturday night, Sunday morning. We finally changed those clocks, and ah, uh, yes, we fall back. Get an extra hour of sleep, oh, yeah. but an extra hour of darkness. Yep. I had forgotten completely, though. I was like, oh, is that already this? Yeah. It's November 1st tomorrow. I know. Just 
And don't forget to change your uh, batteries in your smoke batteries detectors, right? Always a good idea. It's always a good idea. Mm -hmm. Thanks, okay. Scott. Thanks, Scott. Well, less than a week to go before.